Hello everyone. Welcome to GK Today's YouTube channel. We have started a series of general studies videos on several subjects keeping focus on all examinations including UPSC prelims exam and other exams conducted by UPSC, SSC, State Public Service Commissions and NET and SLET examinations. Today's tutorial is on classification of organisms. My name is Ritresha and I'll be taking you through this. Our Earth is 4.54 billion years old and as per available evidences, life has been there on Earth for at least 3.5 billion years. However, some recent theories say that life started even earlier than that. The total number of life forms on Earth is near 20 to 30 million species. Out of these, only 1.7 million species of living organisms have been given scientific names and described. Further, out of these 1.7 million described species, around 1.2 million are animals while the rest 0.5 million species are of plants. The single group of insects alone, however, has outnumbered all plants. There are around 0.75 million species of insects alone. We come to systematics and taxonomy. As we discussed right now, there are 1.7 million species of living organisms that have been given scientific names and described. The science of dealing systematically classifying and giving organisms scientific names comes under systematics and taxonomy. Although the two terms are at times used interchangeably, their meanings are quite different. Systematics refers to the scientific classification of organisms into hierarchical groups, mainly on their evolutionary interrelationship, while taxonomy refers to the theory and practice of describing, naming, and classifying organisms. There are, of course, different systems of classification of organisms. The first one is artificial system. The first effort to classify the organisms was done by Hippocrates and Aristotle who arranged the animals into four groups, which are insects, birds, fishes and weeds. The classification was based only on few similarities in morphology and was called artificial classification. Thus, under artificial system of classification, the different categories of organisms are recognized on the basis of one or a few superficial resemblance and differences. Aristotle's system was artificial and so was that of Theophrastus, who is known as the father of botany, who divided the plants into four groups, trees, shrubs, undershrubs and herbs. Next, we come to sexual system. Callus Linnaeus, who is generally referred to, the father, uh, referred to as the father of taxonomy, published Systema Naturae and Species Plantorum in the mid-1750s. And it described around 4,000 species based on the binomial nomenclature. He had actually classified the plants and animals on the basis of reproductive features of the plants, such as features of their stamens. This is why it's known as sexual system of classification. Binomial names comprise of a genus name and a species name. Genus always starts with a capital letter, species with a small letter. Example for humans, homo sapiens. Next, we come to natural system. In the late 19th century, George Bentham and Sir Joseph Hooker were two English biologists at the Royal Botanical Garden at Kew who had adopted a more comprehensive system of classification which is documented in their magnum opus, their publication, Genera Plantarum. This system was based on not only the features of the reproductive organs and structural relationship, but also all the other important characters. This was known as natural system. They used this to place plants 
into several groups. Next we come to phylogenetic system. This is the latest and has been proposed by German botanist Adolf Engler in 1892. However, it's been carried forward by John Hutchinson since 1940s. He was the former director of Royal Botanical Gardens at Kew from England. So phylogenetics refers to the system of classification based on evolution relationship of plants. Hutchinson has been the leading exponent in this field. Next, we come to scientific hierarchy and classification. What are the important concepts? We start with taxon. So the various taxonomic categories form a hierarchy in which each level above is more inclusive than the one below. So what is taxon? Taxon is a group of organisms that fills a particular classification category. For example, all humans are homo sapiens, so they form a species taxon. All mammals constitute the class taxon mammalia. As we mentioned, each level is more inclusive than the one below it. So there are seven categories as such. Species, genus, family, order, class, division and phylum. Division is used in place of phylum for plants. In botany, it's division. In zoology, it's phylum. And then there is kingdom. An example would be species taxon or genus taxon. So these are all taxons. Now to coming to scientific name. So scientific name is the binomial nomenclature that we talked about. That is how we uh, use homo sapiens to signify human beings. Since the 18th century, we have been using this. Each name is basically made up of two names. The first name is genus and is always written with the first letter in capital. The second name is species and all of them are in small letters. All the letters in species have to be in small case, low case. So the scientific names are usually itali italicized when printed. But if you are writing it by hand, uh, and you cannot write it in italics, you are expected to underline them. So an example is scientific name for humans is Homo sapiens. Another example would be for lions, the scientific name is Panthera leo and for tigers, it's Panthera tigris. So lion and tiger, though different species, belong to the same genus. There are rules to write a scientific name, of course. A scientific name has generally two words in Latin or derived from Latin irrespective of their origin. The first letter in the name of the genus is always capitalized. Genus means generic name. The whole name must be written or printed in italics or underlined if italics is not possible. Subspecies can also denote the name of the person who discovered or described the particular organism. So, if someone discovers a subspecies, say one, a kind of roundworm, then the species can be named after that scientist. The organism which are derived by names already given by Linnaeus, they are denoted by the capital letter L in the end. For example, mango is denoted as Magnifera indica L. We come to genus. Genus is the first higher category above species level. And it is a group of species which are related and have fewer characters in common compared to a single species. For example, both onion and garlic belong to the genus Elium. Onion is Allium sepa and garlic is Allium sativum. Tomato or Solanium lycopersium, potato or Solanium tuberosum, and brinjal or Solanum melongena belong to the same genus. Species. Species is the basic unit of taxonomy and has been defined by Ernst Mayer as groups of 
interbreeding natural populations so it is the lowest category and it is defined as groups of interbreeding natural populations that are reproductively isolated from each group species can be of different types such as sympatric allopatric and sibling species so what do these mean sympatric species are those which inhabit the same geographical area allopatric are the ones who inhabit different geog geographical areas and sibling species are those which are reproductively isolated but morphologically similar so they cannot reproduce among themselves but they look and behave similarly coming to family a family is made of one or more related genera or genus and is based on certain features for example the family solanaceae genus is solanum that is potato tomato brinjal etc they belong to this genus genus capsicum chili chili peppers etc these belong to this genus nicotiana tobacco and related plants would belong here and datura or atropa belladonna which is nightshade these belong to same genus these together form the family solanaceae family hominidae so pongo is a species of orangutan gorilla we already know what it is pan includes chimpanzees and bonobo and homo includes modern humans and our ancestors and relatives such as neanderthals homo erectus etc so they together belong to this family order a group of families which have resemblance with each other form an order for example solanaceae and convolvulaceae are families of morning glory and sweet potato and they belong to the order of solanaceae so as you can see species together from genus genus together from family families together form order coming to class they represent organisms of related orders so now orders are together forming class for example the order named primata comprises of primates such as monkey gorilla and man and the order of carnivora represents lion tiger cat etc but they together belong to mammalia which includes all mammals coming to phylum or division phylum in case of animals division in case of plants comprises of organisms belonging to different classes so now classes together become phylum classes which have common characteristics together become one phylum botanists use the term division as we discussed in case of plants it's become divisions okay in animals phylum core data includes species amphibia reptilia aves and mammalia so fish amphibians reptiles birds and mammals so because of common characteristics like a presence of notochord dorsal hollow nervous system and pharynx perforated by gills so these are the common characteristics these uh five orders share so five classes share coming to kingdom kingdom includes all organisms that share a set of distinguishing common characteristics so plants they all photosynthesize so all uh, organisms that photosynthesize become the plant kingdom whereas the rest become animal kingdom so the two divisions are plant kingdom and animal kingdom this is the highest category of classification now we come to the two kingdom and five kingdom classifications firstly two kingdom classifications so all living organisms in the world have been divided into two kingdoms the animal kingdom which is animalia and the plant kingdom which is plantae so this system has existed since the ancient times but was formalized by linnaeus in 1758 but it has problems for example viruses were included in the plant kingdom but viruses are not 
plant they are neither plants nor animals as we know it now then plant kingdom included mushrooms and fungi however mushrooms and fungi do not synthesize their own food nor do they have chlorophyll so how do we classify them as plants then sponges and corals became animals but uh, sponges and corals were found out later to be animals but they were originally placed in the plant kingdom under this classification so these are the errors this system has which is we moved on to the better one which is the five kingdom classification so it was first proposed by r h whitaker in 1969 and divided the entire living organisms into five kingdoms which are monera protista fungi plantae and animalia we'll start with monera so all unicellular organisms which have prokaryotic cells as in they have no membrane these are under monera an example is bacteria and protista protista is mainly protozoa it includes unicellular and eukaryotic organisms so eukaryotic is the ones who have mem cell membranes but these are neither animals plants or fungi so this group has been mostly created for convenience and they do not include a natural group of organisms this is mostly any organism we couldn't place in the other ones we pushed it here so this includes protozoa and protophyta unicellular algae and unicellular al uh, animals such as amoeba next we move on to fungi so fungi comprises of eukaryotic organisms which include microorganisms such as yeasts and molds and mushrooms few important features which differentiates them from plants is Uh, plants and animals is they have chitin in their cell walls which plants or animal animals don't have cell walls plants don't have uh, chitin in their cell walls and they don't photosynthesize and next we move on to the plant kingdom or plantae so this includes multicellular organisms which photosynthesize and it includes flowering plants conifers ferns etc and uh, they create their food by photosynthesis using their chloroplasts with sunlight and finally the animal kingdom which includes all animals multicellular eukaryotic organisms there are some exceptions but mostly animals consume organic product breathe oxygen and and are able to move we say exception because sponges etc can't move so there are some exceptions and these reproduce sexually but there are animals which reproduce asexually and they grow from hollow sphere of cells the blastula during embryonic development so if you like this tutorial and learned from it subscribe to our youtube channel gk today to keep updated about the next tutorial till then goodbye